for over 125 years, X-ray technology has remained based on a hot cathode with a filament that generates extreme heat. An Israeli company has developed a digitally controlled X-ray tube, which they've put into the Nanox Arc, a next-generation digital imaging machine, which is able to produce 3D imaging and uses artificial intelligence to process what it sees. Eris, how does the Nanox Arc imaging system different than those legacy systems that are out there? Two-thirds of the world have no access to medical imaging. And I'm talking about South America, Africa, Southeast um, Asia countries. And by the way, sometimes even... Uh, in developed uh, re countries. Remote lo locations in, in the U.S. as well. And what we are doing is by changing the model and the technology, which makes the system simple, okay, and more accessible in terms of cost-wise and the, uh, the way that we are operating it, accessible to these uh, people. So think about the fact that a hospital, so to speak, it's not a hospital, it's a place, it's like a clinic in Africa. People there have never been exposed to the uh, ability to get medical imaging or proper health care. For the first time we'll have, we're going to put it there, okay? They don't have to pay anything. We charge per scan, so they pay per scan. Only when they get the scan itself, they pay for, for the system. And basically, we get a return uh, based on uh, this. How can you afford to give machines away like that? First of all, we have managed to reduce the cost of the uh, manufacturing of the X-ray. Uh, we are we have changed the uh, the technology that right now it's not a it's not a it's not a worm cutted or hot cutted, but it's a it's a cold cutted. It's like a chip that is the source that uh, they get the nano X-ray to the body, actually, to the detector. And based on this, we analyze the image uh, itself. So it's a different way. It's, um, we are getting X-ray, which is usually two dimension or 2D, and we're moving it to tomosynthesis, which are three dimension. It's like a bed. When you lay on the, on the bed, it doesn't matter if, the, if it's, in, it's a knee or it's a, it's a, it's a hand. Um, and there is an arc, which is over the bed with uh, tubes that are actually taking the, uh, the, the, the pictures, the arc itself is tilting. So you get a 3D image from the right. technology. Think about the, the combination of the technology and the combination of the business model, we're able to provide this uh, service. So legacy x-ray systems are already widely deployed and the capital cost associated with them is already a sunk cost for hospitals. So how do you get the Nanox arc system deployed in these hospitals? We're not competing with the CT. Okay, I'm not, we are not competing with the X-ray. We're not competing with the MRI. We are providing something else. We have acquired three companies in addition to the development of the ARC itself. The first one is uh, USA Rod, which provides, it's an American company, which provides teleradiology services that we can remotely do the reading right. and provide the, the diagnosis. The second is a company called MDW, where we have the we call it now Nanox Marketplace, when we are, it's, it, it's being used like a terminal, that the image goes there and either directed to the teleradiology or to the PAX itself or to the referring physicians. And the radiologists can be paid immediately and not wait until the reimbursement will come or to go to something that we are uh, providing based on the acquisition of uh, Zebra Medical Imaging, which currently called Nanox AI, which is the population health. On the population health, think about two aspects. The first one is that we are moving from predictive medicine, that we analyze databases of images and provide it to become a preventive medicine. So we can tell the insurer, the IDN, the hospital, the, uh, the, uh, the pharmaceutical company, this and this, these are, these are the people that will suffer in the future for something. Yeah, starting to predict those those conditions and getting in front of them and avoiding them altogether. Yeah, based on biomarkers that uh, we can actually uh, uh, provide them based on the analysis. The other thing which is more important, okay, when you do an X-ray or you do a CT, the referring physician will ask the radiologist to find something specific. But when you do an X-ray, when you do a CT, 
There is a lot of data on right, the human body. a lot body, more information. A lot more information. Right. What we are planning to do, we are planning to superpower the data in order to make it available for uh, the population health. The AI that you're building is going to be able to analyze all of that information, I would expect, and start to make some predictions about conditions based on that data, regardless of what the specific indication or specific referring physician goal was in the, in the analysis. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely.